Hi everyone, I'm Asha, an Akashic Records reader, blogger and podcaster. In this series, we will demystify the Akashic Records by bringing to you bite-sized contents on frequently asked questions relating to the Akashic Records. We will also explore topics relating to spirituality, as well as practical application, learnings and reflections in the Akashic Records. My Akashic Masters are very excited to join us in this journey. We send much love, light and blessings to all. Welcome to episode 19 of Case Study 10 of an Akashic Light Reading and Healing Session with Ada. Today we'll be sharing on the case study of another anonymized client whom we shall call Ada. So Ada came to me for a general Akashic Record session. Her first query was, what is the purpose of her life generally and how does she get there? Ada felt that while she knows what is her life purpose deep down in her heart and soul, she doesn't seem to be going in the right way. She knows that there is a specific path that she has to go to, but she thinks that because she is a human being in the physical world, she's not always able to do what she wants to and she just wanted to know whether she's heading in the right direction. When I connected with her masters, they shared that her purpose is to help and empower others in their growth and self-discovery. Ada resonated and shared that she's currently in a profession in the human resource field where she does get to help a lot of people, help them develop or solve their problems. But in recent years, she feels that she's not on the right path. Things have not been going very well for her in terms of work and she has doubts in her own ability. She feels that she's trailing away from what she's supposed to do and she just wanted to know how to stay on track. When I checked in with her masters, her master suggested for Ada to rediscover your life mission by engaging in other activities other than your daily work in the HR field. This will keep the spirit of empowering and supporting others alive. Because this burning flame of passion deep within you, the zest to do more for others, is not being satisfied by your current job. In theory, your job fulfills the requirements. But in reality, it doesn't. On the surface, your job states that you help this and that. Deep down, you feel that with the politics, dynamics of people and associated complexities, it is not as simple and straightforward as you would have imagined from the start. So it becomes a mismatch of expectations in your career journey as you go along. You start wondering, is the issue with me or is the issue with the organization? Unfortunately, it is a mix of both. From the organizational values, the organization has to act in this way to be aligned to their financial goals, which is very different from what you idealistically perceived it to be. Therefore, in order for you to rediscover your life mission, you have to shift your focus to other meaningful pursuits so that you can keep this flame alive in you and not let these other people and organizational issues sort of create that struggle and turmoil within you and make you doubt yourself in the first place. On what are the recommendations for other pursuits? Ada's master suggested voluntary work, specifically to support children in their growth. It is something that Ada can consider. Ada shared that she is currently doing voluntary work to help old folks, but she tries to avoid having to help children because she feels she is not very good with kids. Ada's master shared that while older workers might be her current focus, perhaps it is time right now to readjust your perspectives and see if there can be a breath of fresh air to shift to a new area. It is not about you being selfish. It is self-care. Because when we are in the position where we can satisfy our interests and balance it with helping others, it is a win-win situation for both. 
Don't see it as by me quitting whatever I have committed, it is selfish. Rather, it is self-care. When you reach this nice state where you are happy, they are happy, isn't that a win-win? And you will feel this flame alive within you. Every day, if you think about this purpose you set out for your soul to achieve, you are doing something. It's not like you feel that you're stuck in this job. It's nowhere near what I've imagined. I'm stuck to the same place. I've committed to everything. I shouldn't quit because that is selfish. Ada's master suggested for her not to have these expectations imposed upon herself to restrict her path. Ada resonated with the messages. She felt that it is very aligned to what she has in mind, but never quite put into practice. Ada shared that volunteering has always been big for her, but she has restricted herself to only old folks. And after that, when COVID hit, she didn't think about it anymore. So she has been continuing what she had been doing. On that, Ada's masters added, take your time. You can even consider tutoring children over Zoom, etc. Everything is open. Her masters also clarified that they are not dictating, Everything is open to possibilities. Try to take a step back and rethink everything. It is a blank canvas for you to work on, and you have maximum control over everything. On Ada's second query, she asked what is the root cause behind her repeated pattern of attracting bad relationships that make her lose faith and trust in others and how she can overcome. On the second query, Ada shared that she has gone through some really bad relationships and has lost faith in relationships, be it marriage or just about everything, including sometimes people around her. She doesn't trust people around her much and she shared that she has serious trust issues with everybody. She trusts herself the most, but even then she doubts herself. And this is manifesting in other issues. Ada would like to know how she can overcome this. We then proceeded to examine the root cause behind the repeated pattern of attracting bad relationships that made Ada lose faith and trust in others. On this point, Ada's master showed me an image of someone drinking water, which is a very scarce resource in a desert-like place. And there's this child of very tan skin, somewhat like African Nigerian skin color. This child is looking at the guy consuming a scarce resource of water and not extending it outwardly to her. Ada's master shared that this is the origin for Ada's lack of trust in others. In this one lifetime, even though it seems really unrelated to the present dynamic of a bad relationship, Ada lost the trust and faith that others would share limited resources that they hold precious with her. That if something is a scarce resource, they will definitely keep it for themselves, for their own selfish gains and vested self-interest. There will be nothing left for Ada. That actually wrote over to this mistrust in people when it comes to commitment, love, or dedicating a portion of them to you. There is always this suspicion lurking behind that such a precious and scarce resource of yours, your limited time and attention, are you really devoting it to me? Or is there part of a plan, something evil? Is there a hidden motive or agenda? behind all that you're trying to show favor to me on. There's this mistrust that actually started from this experience in a past life that wasn't resolved. In that situation, water was a very precious and scarce resource that not everybody has it, especially in desert-like conditions, and the girl was being deprived of it. Nobody extended it to her. In the same vein, in this relationship, Ada's master shared she also sees other people's time and love as a scarce resource that they will jealously keep it to themselves and guard it for themselves. It is very doubtful that people with all their vested interests and selfish gains would even share it with you. And that actually creates that suspicion. 
So when it creates this suspicion right from the start, it actually blocks off a lot of people because we sort of undergo this X-ray on them to make sure that all the hidden motives and agendas are in check, that they are indeed pure and clear. But a lot of times we end up blocking a lot of suitors, relationships and even friendships because we constantly put them under the scrutiny of whether they are trustworthy, they can meet certain expectations or standards of reliability and trust. On how Ada could overcome all this, Ada's master shared that first, you have to take a bold step to forgive others who have sort of sinned and wronged you in the past, including that past life with that image shared. To seek a closure that even if you're unaware of the past that had happened, I forgive whoever was guarding the scarce resource and I'm prepared to let it go. In the present life, starting from your childhood growing up all the way to this age, all the people that have let you down for whatever reason, not everybody is in your life right now. A lot of times many are no longer in your life. But a part of us is still clinging on to the past and using it as a verification of present issues. That my past history had proven that all these people with such traits cannot be trusted. So going forward, I will make sure I preempt all of them, prevent the same mistake from repeating. Her master shared that it is a case of our mind trying to protect us. It is our mind trying to take control and say, I will take care of you. But instead of the mind taking care of us, it blocks us by trying to act smart in this situation that is no longer applicable. The past, because of certain karmic links with certain people, certain lessons to learn, you have attracted these relationships and they have harmed you in different ways. But the fact that they have harmed you doesn't create a precedent to prove that going forward, all people with similar traits will similarly harm you. So how do we forgive these people? Her masters encourage that if you do any meditation, to visualize them once you have settled down, maybe 10 to 15 minutes into the meditation when you're feeling pretty calm. Visualize them in your mind. Invite them in energetically and share with them first how sad or angry you were with them hurting you or doing the mistake that they have done to you. That is the first step. Acknowledging the issue, acknowledging and honoring your emotions. The second step is I forgive. I let you go. I no longer hold any cords with you. And the third step is to visualize yourself blessing them and visualize them floating away. You might even need to summon them and repeat this energetically three to four times for very difficult ones because it is not a one-off exercise. For people who hurt us deeply for decades, it is not something where I forgive you once off and you are out of my system energetically. In the energetic field, you will feel like you might even need to repeat it 10 times and that is perfectly normal. And don't give yourself the pressure that I must forgive this person successfully at the end of the month, feeling which I'm a failure. There's no such thing. So when we invite the person in energetically, even though they are not physically with us energetically when we set the strong intention to invite them in, take it that they are there and it is more for us rather than for them. We can also imagine it is sort of like a very tight string holding both of us together. And even after 10 years, the string is very tight. When you let go of your end of the string, that person energetically is left with only one end of the other string. And when they float away, there's nothing cording both of you together anymore. It is that simple. And all it takes is for you to start this process of forgiveness. Ada resonated. She shared that she has been trying very hard to let go and forgive. It seems that every time she thought she has done it, images or scenarios would pop up in her dreams. Those dreams would be so real 
and she would be in the same bad situation all over again. Every time she has those dreams, she feels that she's being hurt all over again. It is torturing her for a very, very long time. Ada's masters then suggested that there is this Ho'oponopono prayer, which goes, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Try to have it in your visualization meditation. Her masters felt that it is very, very powerful. Energetically, when we invite someone, especially people who really hurt us, sometimes the first time we do it, tears will start streaming right from the start to the end. Take it as tears of liberation or joy, a releasing of pent-up emotions that you have suppressed for decades, and it is now time to let go. Her masters reminded that when we cry, don't see it as a sign of weakness, mistake or failure on our part. No, it is to liberate ourselves so that we can start new beginnings for ourselves. Because what is in the past had already happened. Nobody wanted it as such. We couldn't control or help ourselves to the best of our ability. It is done deal. We can only move forward and energetically to be very gentle with the vulnerable part of us. When we invite the person, it is not with the steely exterior of ours. It is back to our own vulnerable self that was once deeply hurt by this person. So it is both of us together and energetically it is very, very powerful. Because when you set the intention, I forgive you, I let you go, blessing the person, seeing the person go, you repeat a few times, you will feel that each time the tears get less and less and slowly it really clears up. When you clear even 60 to 70% of the memory from your heart space, it is a breath of fresh air. You will feel that your heart has never been so light in your life. On the third query, Ada asked why is the relationship with her mother so difficult. Ada shared that her mom is living with her at the moment. Their relationship has been extremely rocky since the day she can remember. There are ups and downs but mostly really bad. And it sometimes makes her very angry. She wants to know what is the reason why the relationship is so difficult and why they just can't seem to see eye to eye in anything. We then went deeper with a set of questions to explore the relationship between Ada and her mum. On the contract between Ada and her mum, I receive, it is a contract of forgiveness. On any past life between Ada and her mum, I was given an image where her mum was shown as a very old lady, long hair and bun up, wearing very traditional woman attire back in those days. And her mum's back was very bent. She's in a very difficult circumstance financially. Life was struggling for her. She has been through very tough times. At her very old age, looking around 70 to 80 years old, she has to take care of this kid who was her grandchild. The kid was around 5 years old, running around short blob hair. On the main message that the masters wanted to convey, it was that life was a struggle. That grandmother had to strive hard to make a living and make things work out for the grandchild that she didn't want to have. It wasn't part of her responsibility, but she was tasked to do it and thrown with the task of feeding someone so young when she's already into retirement. So it formed a lot of grudges, resentment and unfairness on her part. That she feels that why should she be shouldering the burden of a mistake or failure on her son's part, which has nothing to do with her. Now she's settled with a child she has to feed. And she has to deal with all this responsibility all alone. That was when the negative feeling arose. So in that case, her mom in this lifetime was her grandmother in that previous lifetime. And Ada was that kid of around five years old. On what is her mom's purpose in her life now, her master shared that it is to reconcile the relationship in the past. In the past, the unresolved issue was that right till her mom's death, her mom still had a love-hate relationship with her. 
On one hand, she loved you enough. That's why she fed you, clothed you, took on the sole burden and duty of caring for you, a child that wasn't even hers. It was her son's. She loved you enough deep down in her subconscious. That's why she bothered to keep you alive and raise you up as a child. In those days, that is considered love. That is their understanding of love by making sure you have food and clothes. Ada agreed that the love is somewhat a sense of duty. And on the other hand, her masters added, Ada's so-called grandmother in that lifetime has this hate because each time she sees you, she sees this huge responsibility thrown on her shoulders to care for you for a whole lifetime. Because you were very young and she's very old and she's already in a very difficult position, yet she has to care for you. And her masters suggested that at that point, her grandmother might also be saddled with debts. So now her purpose is to try to work out all these difficult issues that are separating both of you so as to reconcile the relationship. Basically, her soul came back again to try to resolve this by repeating this in a closer and more tangible relationship with you this time. On what is Ada's purpose to her mom's life, it is to teach her patience, kindness for self and others. On what is Ada supposed to learn from her mom? It is to forge loving and nurturing relationships with others, starting with your mom. In this regard, Ada's masters also link it back to the issue of mistrust. Ada's mom is here for her to be the first point of contact, first person to try to heal this mistrust deep within you by trying your best to work out your issues with her. Because her whole purpose is here to reconcile this relationship with you whether she's aware of it or not. She has to put up with you and try to learn the lesson of patience and try to make things work out. Even if she couldn't understand why is there always this love-hate. And her soul deep down actually wants to try to work things out with you. She then becomes your tool of subject matter. For you to forge loving and nurturing relationships with others, something that you deeply long and crave for all your life, but you always feel hampered due to this serious mistrust in others. And she is that person for you to work out this trust issue. Because if you can slowly open your heart up to trust her by even a small percentage, you are opening yourself up to the world. On what could Ada perhaps do? Are there any other suggestions? Her masters shared that Ada could dedicate and send blessings and prayers on her mom's way every day. Because sometimes the mental state may not allow us to be in the same physical space. We might not be ready for each other to engage in meaningful conversations. There's no point if it is going to be a tit-for-tat conversation. In that case, it is useful for the mom to be Ada's subject matter in a visualization meditation as shared earlier. Energetically, Ada can also try to recall incidents in present life where her mom has hurt her or made very hurtful remarks on her that made it very difficult to forgive. There are always these key incidents. To try to visualize these incidents recurring and try to release it energetically. At the same time, don't give yourself the pressure to release it all at one go. The key here is the intention. Once you have the intention to get things going, things will unfold for you in a way best for you. So sometimes the first time we do it, especially very hurtful situations, we may end up crying throughout. It is very difficult for us to even make a statement or assessment of how successful that meditation was. So don't hold these notions of success or expectations of perfection. Just let them be and just treat it as your opportunity to clear all the baggage within. At the end, after you have released, you can also visualize, say, the goal light of blessings arising from your heart space. And then in whatever form that you may love to, it can be all your prayers in whatever mode, just send it to your mom and dedicate all your blessings away, wishing her the best of health and happiness. Starting from that past life where you weren't her duty, yet she fed and clothed you. 
Her masters also shared that it is due to those old beliefs where they didn't know how to love others because they weren't really loved themselves. They didn't really receive that kind of so-called unconditional love for them to even know what is unconditional love. So that was her mom's idea of love that means to feed and cloth her. Ada resonated and shared that her mom is exactly still like that. Ada's masters reiterated that her mom is here to reconcile the relationship. While you might find it challenging, it is actually good for you energetically because she's right here and right under your charge in the same rooftop. There's nowhere you can sort of escape and therefore you have to confront, that is to face the issue directly. You cannot just hide or say that, oh, we're in separate households, you don't have to see her and therefore she's not an issue, or just wait till she's away. Anyway, it only takes a few more years, it's fine, just mind your own business. Unfortunately, no. You're in the same household, but that's because you're so choose it and she's here to reconcile the relationship with you. Her limited notions of love also stems from her lack of unconditional love from others, so she doesn't really understand, and it is fine. Ada can always take the first step to help heal energetically. Seen from this higher perspective, there's so much more wisdom to this. It is beyond that tit-for-tat daily quarrel when you are able to step higher and see things from a higher perspective. That, oh, so this is what happened in past life, our souls from the highest perspective chose to repeat this relationship and the lessons in this present life in an even more intimate way, this time as mother and daughter, not even as grandmother and grandchild. And we are here to get things right and change the dynamics. This is what I'm here to do. Let's try not to waste it. Let's try our best. At the same time, let's not pressure ourselves and give ourselves unnecessary expectations or perfections to this. Because methods of the heart, the heart takes its own time to heal. We can't rush it like the mind. We can't say, I've got this KPI. I've got till the end of this month to sort it out. Our heart can't. When the heart is ready, it will say it is ready. When it is not ready and needs more time, so be it. Ada shared that everything makes sense. It is good to understand why things are like that. Very useful story of what exactly happened in the past life. Ada's master shared that if it helps you from now on, hopefully see her with a different light and from a higher perspective. Because it is very difficult to see from a higher perspective where we don't get to see the full picture. We don't even understand why we are so unlucky to be born in this kind of household with this kind of treatment right from the start. Like, why did you even choose me? On Ada's last query, we asked if there are any other important messages to share with her. And on that, I received from her masters, Be gentle to yourself in your journey to heal and release. Take things slowly and all is well. Next, we move on to the healing segment. So I asked Ada what she wanted to focus on. So Ada shared that she wants to work on her anger to release and heal the anger if possible, specifically on events and things around her in the recent one to two years and people in her life, including her mom, which made her feel angry. She feels that she's angry all the time and with a lot of repressed emotions within, most of which is anger. We then proceeded to run the Akashic Light Clearings and Activations. As I've explained to Ada, these are energetic commands that assist the body to heal and release and shift as guided, as aligned to Ada's highest good. We caution that it may not always release all the baggage so conveniently, especially when your soul chose certain lessons. So for example, if Ada so chose to learn the lesson of forgiveness, she has to go through the difficult situation and make the conscious choice and decision and action to forgive. There's no shortcut in just clearing it through us and all is gone. That is an illusion that doesn't happen. But as far as possible, we can always run the clearings and activations and let the masters guide us to receive what you can receive. 
And that also means, in a large extent, creating the space within you to have that clarity of mind to make the conscious decision that you need. So in her case, we ran the clearings and activations first to connect to Mother Earth, to assist her to form that huge beam of white light to allow her to release all that no longer serves through that beam of white light deep into Mother Earth. All the baggage and all the suppressed emotions that she has stored within her for decades to allow all these to live energetically as much as it is possible. We also ran clearings and activations for anger to self and others, because each time we are angry with others, to a certain extent, we are also angry with ourselves. So we wanted this clearing and activation to release as much as possible There's this anger that we are clinging on, be it to ourselves or to others. We also ran releasing to help release all those belief systems, emotions, negativity, people that may not be good for us to keep. At the same time, we also ran clearings and activations for Buddha's compassion to activate that compassion towards the self and others. Otherwise, sometimes we might be very harsh on ourselves or very judgmental and critical and angry towards others when we are not able to be in a compassionate space ourselves. We also ran clearings and activations for divine love to activate the love from the divine, that unconditional love from the heart space, peace within, to allow her to feel more peaceful and calm within. We also ran clearings and activations to assess the wisdom from her past and present lives that may help her to cope with the present issues, merging with her higher self to connect that divide between herself and her higher self so as to allow her higher self to come in and more proactively guide her in the days ahead of what she needs and not just what she wants. We also ran clearings and activations to bridge the duality between the heart and mind because when that happens, that can bring us to opposite directions and make it very hard for us to make a heart-centered decision that is also practical. We also ran clearings and activations for brain balance to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain to reduce all the overthinking and overworrying and to calm us down. And lastly, we ran the clearing and activation for I am divine, which is very important for us that regardless of all the pain and suffering that we have experienced in this 3D world, to remind us that ultimately we have the divine spark within us that is lying within, waiting to be activated, that each of us are children of God, or source of all that is. And once we center into it, we are able to experience and see things from a higher perspective. So in that healing process, I was also guided to assist Ada to help cut away some cords that were attaching her to her mom in an unhealthy way. And lastly, we send the goal light of the Akashic Records to her chakras, four bodies and auric fields to patch any holes and tests and to seal the session. Personally for me, the huge takeaway for this is the understanding that sometimes the people who hurt us, they have very limited notions of what so-called unconditional love may be simply because they've not experienced that unconditional love in their lives. And if I'm able to see that from a higher perspective, I know that I will be able to hold more compassion towards them. Another huge takeaway for me is the visualization meditation and the Hono Pono Pono prayer, which is a very good way to invite in persons that hurt us deeply to try to clear and heal the relationship energetically. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast. If you would like to read about my dialogues and reflections with the Akashic Masters, you can visit my free blog at asha-akashicrecords.com. Till next time, take care.